Stuart K. Riley here with the top five worst Metal Gear games. It's time for number three. Snake's Revenge on the NES. Now, the fact that it's not even called Metal Gear Snake's Revenge ought to tip you off to how good this game is. It was only released in the US and was made from the ground up to appeal to Western audiences. Why it doesn't have Metal Gear in the title, I have no clue. Maybe they thought it would sell better if people thought it was its own game. But despite being a piece of crap, Metal Gear on the NES sold really well, so why not just call it Metal Gear 2? Kojima had absolutely nothing to do with this game and didn't even know it existed until someone at Konami working on the game told him about it. Him and Kojima just happened to be on the same train ride together. And it was on that train ride that Kojima began putting together in his head what would later become Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake on the MSX. If it weren't for Snake's Revenge, Kojima wouldn't have made a true sequel to the original Metal Gear. So you could say that this game is the reason we got so many great games after that. But is Snake's Revenge itself any good? Why the hell do you think it's on this list? Kojima Kojima can't even decide what he thinks of it. In one interview, he says he likes the game, but in another interview, he specifically said it's crappy. What do I think? I think this game is Kentucky Fried Turd. Take everything that you hate about the NES Metal Gear, then ramp it up to a thousand. First off, check out Solid Snake, or excuse me, Lieutenant Solid Snake. They straight up made him Arnold. Yeah, surveillance camera, man. Well, like the NES Metal Gear, you get dropped off in the woods outside the facility along with two other guys whose names I've already forgotten. And if you think you're gonna do a no alert run of this game, you can hang that up. It's literally impossible because as soon as you enter the third screen of the game, these guys in these helicopters spot you. Helicopter! And then you get to see what it's like being spotted and the biggest glaring flaw with this game. There's no cooldown period for the alert. The soldiers will chase you for all eternity. There's only one way to stop the alert and that's kill all the soldiers soldiers on screen. Now what's really jank is that there's screens where no soldiers spawn at all, even in alert mode, but the alert mode will still be going on despite no soldiers being on screen. So you have to specifically be in a screen that the soldiers spawn in, kill them all, and then the alert will go away. It defies all logic and the things we were taught by good Metal Gear games. You know what makes this even better? The bullets follow you. Look, they straight up go directly towards you even if you're not standing in the direction the soldier is facing. What is this? Heat-seeking bullets? Yeah, and I'm a shit-seeking piss missile. A pistol. So next the game throws a dark area with searchlights at you and you have to stay away from the searchlights while still trying to figure out where the hell you're supposed to go. But if you do get spotted, the whole screen lights up so that's nice, I guess. Sometimes when you enter a searchlight screen, you've only got like a split second to get away from the light before it spots you. That's straight-up classic NES bullshit. I've said before how much of a fan I'm not of impossible to beat NES games, so I won't get into that. This whole segment got a little better when I found out where the rations and the ammo spawn, and you can still do that thing you can do in the MSX games where you leave and come back and the item respawns. You do have to use the rations manually though, they don't automatically refill your health when it goes to zero. It took me a while to figure out how you're supposed to get into the facility, but what happens is you're supposed to get a call on the radio that tells you to wait by the door, but the thing is you have to make sure you don't trigger an alert on the way there and I kept doing that because the searchlights are such bullshit okay I've said bullshit too much I'm gonna get a thesaurus out and next time I need to say bullshit I'll say something else when I finally get into the facility things don't get much better in fact a lot of it's just me wandering around trying to find a door that isn't locked with a key card there's only one door you can go through and guess what's in there a key card finally some progress then I went through the back door and found a suppressor. So the game should be a little easier, right? Well, here's one thing that reared its ugly head. At this point, rations and ammo only spawn at one particular place, outside. So if I need more items, I have to go all the way back to the searchlights and crap again just to restock. What a bunch of Tommy rot. One thing you can do in the game is free prisoners, and when you do, your rank sometimes goes up, which gives you more max health and you can hold more items. But sometimes you'll find these guys that are officers 
gases or something, and they all say the same thing. What you have to do with them is get some truth gas, which will make them give you more information. But a lot of times it's just completely useless information, like, yo, Metal Gear is badass, bro. Nice, you make me go out of my way to find truth gas, and all you have to say is pee-pee-poo-poo. -poo. Actually, if he would have said pee-pee-poo-poo, -poo, I would have shit a brick. That would have made my day. So you know what? Fuck these guys. We're not even gonna bother with that shit. Oh, fuck. What am I supposed to do now? Oh, fuck off. That is malarkey. Why would you put the soldier facing the door I'm about to walk out of? I'll tell you why. Because it's an NES game and NES games are CBT. Can't beat them. There is one place you can go that the alert phase will go away and for some reason that's the elevator. It also goes into a side-scrolling perspective. Speaking of, there's areas in the game that are side-scrollers and it's like you're playing a completely different game. And I kinda hate it. Why? Because one of my old nemesis Nemesis's returns. No, not poles. I'm talking about water. There's bombs in the water as well as an O2 gauge. And the gauge is at zero and you're already losing life. So what do you do? You gotta get the oxygen tank. Where is it? In a room filled with poison gas. Yay! Make sure you have a ration you can use when you get out of there. Which, by the way, if you need more rations at this point in the game, you're pretty damn far away from the woods. So if you want rations, you gotta go all the way back to the searchlights again and then go all the way all the way back where you were and not get hit by anything which means not setting off alerts that is such hooey the bosses in this game are damn near impossible you'll only beat them if you have full rations and the skill of some ultra super speed runner otherwise you're gonna need a lot of save states and rewinding as you can see here i went through save states so many times the game started glitching up you see these things here they're blocking your way to the door you need to go through and they hurt you if they touch you so you know what you're supposed to do you're supposed to destroy them, and you can literally destroy them with anything you have, even your knife. What they don't tell you is it takes 83,948 hits to take them out. But luckily I had some C4. By the way, it takes two C4s to blow them up. Then you get on a ship and you fight these grenade guys who still aggravating are still easier than that first boss fight. The worst part is when you run out of grenades and then you have to use C4 on the last guy. But this one's not too bad. When you're on this ship, you better make for damn I'm sure you get the mine detector because you will not get a chance to get it again and when you do need it you won't be able to come back to this area so you'll just be fucked that's the kind of shit these old games used to do i'm so glad we moved past that then we go to a floor on the bottom of the ship and we finally get to see a metal gear several of them actually but uh-oh looks like i pissed off the roombas so i had to destroy the ship so i go down to the munitions room and set up a c4 which blows up all the munitions and the clock starts counting down. Now I have to race my ass to the heliport and they give you just enough time to get this done. Oh shit, oh shit, the timer's counting down! We're not gonna make it! But believe it or not, I actually did this on my first try. So I leave the ship and me and Pequod get the hell out of here. Now you would think this is the end of the game. You destroyed Metal Gear and you got out of the sinking ship alive. But it's not over yet, Snake. We have confirmed the existence of Metal Gear 2. So now you gotta destroy Metal Gear 2. And remember when I said you better remember to get that mine detector? Guess what? Now you need it. And this is the part of the game where shit starts of becoming so cryptic, I finally needed to pull out a walkthrough just to find out what I'm supposed to do. What I'm supposed to do is look for a secret entrance to the next area by blowing up sandbags with C4. And every one of these sandbags has a guy with a homing pistol launcher under it, and before you can find out whether that was the right place or not, you have to kill him. This took me more time to do than I would like to admit, and I only found out which one it was by using the walkthrough. And because I want you to all suffer with me if you ever play this game, I'm not going to show you which one it was. It was this one, by the way. Oh, great. More side-scrolling water levels. Why don't I just fall into the Saw 2 syringe pit? And the syringes are full of Clorox. Yum! Now we're getting on a train, and then we start getting some weird calls. There is no trap on the train. That sounds like the talk of somebody who put a trap on the train. Oh, speaking of syringe pits, there's a spiky floor. Fun! Full body acupuncture. Let's fucking go. 
Okay, that's a neat effect. I'm in the third car. There are no enemies here. That sounds like the talk of somebody who put enemies here. And there they are, putting claymores in my face. Hey, here's some ammo. Oh, shit. Metal Gear NES all over again. We go to save our friend that's been lying to us, and shocker, he's a spy. And how do we kill spies? With missiles, of course. <laughs> And he drops a power armor. Solid Snake now has power armor confirmed. And this, my friends, is where I stopped playing the game. And let me tell you why. I got stuck on this one part where I couldn't figure out where the hell I was supposed to go. I see this thing right here that looks like something you can blow up. But I tried a rocket launcher, I tried C4, and nothing would blow it up. I looked all around the rest of the area, and there was nowhere else to go. So I pulled out the walkthrough, and the rest of the footage you're about to see is the walkthrough, not my footage. You're supposed to put on the power armor and push the rubble all the way to the end, and then you take a C4 bomb and then blow up the wall. How in the super califragile fucking locious are you supposed to know that? You don't get a hint, you don't get a codec call about it, nothing. Maybe I just don't have whatever issue of Nintendo Power it says you can do this on. And I started skimming through the walkthrough, and I noticed there's another hour and a half of this game. And that's when I said, no, fuck it, I'm not playing this anymore. But I will show you what the final boss is. It's Big Boss, and he is now a cyborg. You apparently cheese him with missiles, and then he goes into his second form, Super Big Boss! You can't make this shit up. And after you defeat Super Big Boss, you have to go fight Metal Gear 2. Well, I say fight, but all you really do is navigate some missiles to Metal Gear 2. You just keep doing this over and over until Metal Gear 2 blows up. And after you blow up Metal Gear 2, the UN declares world peace and Solid Snake is a hero. Oh my god, people. This game is a mess. This game is way too difficult, way too cryptic, and it's just, it's I'm trying not to say bullshit because I've said it a hundred times, but fuck it. It's bullshit, 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 bullshit. This game is bullshit. Stay away from this abomination of a Metal Gear game. And you know what's sad? It's not the worst one I've ever played, but it's still pretty damn bad. It honestly should be at number one. But there's still two more to go, and I can't wait to tear into them too. So stick around for Metal Gear Month, people, because we're gonna do number two, and it's an obvious one. <laughs>